Welcome to section 4 of Data Network Security 1. In this section, we'll be looking at broken authentication and section management. Now, at the end of this section, you should be able to explain some security vulnerabilities with regards to broken authentication and section management. Uh, we'll look at some reference to actual examples of vulnerabilities in this regard. Now, you should also understand how an attacker can exploit these vulnerabilities and how one can fix in a web application these vulnerabilities. So we want to look at broken authentication. Now, in the Open Web Application Security Project, OAPS, um, broken authentication and session management is the second most critical vulnerabilities that we have. And this relates to how the web application is protected from by each user okay for each web session now there are many many types of flaws with broken authentication and a typical example is section hijacking section hijack so what are the implications of broken authentication and section management here we are looking at once you have a weak mechanism authentication mechanism and section management this can compromise a user or system administration account. Okay, it can re result in the compromise of a user or a system administration account. Also, section tokens not properly protected can result in some attackers hijacking these sections. Because once an attacker knows the section ID, it means that the attacker can use that ID into hacking into your web application. So what is section hijacking? An attacker may seek to hijack or steal a web session by learning a victim's section or secret session ID. Now, once a web application is created and we said that you provide some other credentials like the username and password, which is different from just a normal website. Now, here a session is created. Once a session is created, it means a session ID is also created. Now, knowing a user's session ID can allow an attacker to impersonate a user. And once the user gets that, the person can enter into your account. Now, if a web app manages session IDs poorly, then we are saying that such can cause vulnerabilities. Now, how is this session ID managed poorly? To start with, some developers display session IDs within their URL instead of using cookies. Now, even for those who use cookies, attackers sometimes hack into their systems or personal, personally locally stored files to attract or to extract such cookies. And once they get hold of the cookies, they are able to get hold of your session IDs and they trick the user into running covert scripts. Now, an example of session hijacking is what we have here. Now, typing the following script in a vulnerable search field will reveal session ID. So if you copy this script and a site is vulnerable, putting this script in a search field will result in some error. Now, what will happen is that a pop-up message will come or a pop-up window will come, and this will display user session and even display the username. Once a hijacker gets these details, it's easy for the hijacker to go back into the system and impersonate the user. Another type of broken authentication is what's called a session fixation. Now, this is another type of attack that can be performed. Okay, attacker accesses the target website and obtains the session ID and does repetition or access the web application a number of times using this session ID. So, an attacker gets hold of your session ID and does the authentication or goes through your, your web app a number of times repeatedly just to access 
the site. And this is done to keep the site alive or to keep the session alive. Now, for session physician, we are saying that the attacker gets the victim to access the target website with a session ID. So once I, I enter my web application with the session ID, now, this can be done via cross-site scripting or phishing, which we'll look, we'll look at later in other sessions. Now, I've provided you with two examples of such, an example of such scripts. Now, once the victim accesses the site, the attacker can take over from there. So you use your session ID, you log on to the system, and the attacker pretends to give you some script. Now, once you go into your system, the attacker gets hold of the session. Now, if the session ID expiration on a website or a web application isn't timely enough, now it increases the chances for an attacker to perform a session prediction or session physician attack. And by, that's by allowing them more time to guess a value. So an attacker can try to guess your session ID. It also increases the number of concurrent open sessions. Because the attacker will want to be trying the section a number of times. Now, in a shared work environment, you can access a website in another user's session. So here, the browser, the browser's back button can be used to access previous pages, which is, was, which has been accessed by the victim. So I go to my website, I go to a particular site, put my put in my details. Now, an attacker can come to that same site and use the back key of the web browser. And once the authentication is weak, the hacker gets access to your system. Now, some weak session management and credential and session prediction. Now, web applications often make use of session management to trick and track a user when communication is first established. So a user will prove the identity to the site with what? Login credentials. Now once that is done, a unique session is then supplied to the user. Now, rather than require the user to what? Constantly log in, a unique session is always provided. Now it is stored in a cookie or a hidden form field or even a URL parameter. Some developers do that. So that subsequent communication between the user and the site is then tagged with the session ID as proof that you are the authentic, uh, authenticated session that has been taking place. Okay, so once a subsequent communication between the user and the site is tagged, that session ID serves as a proof now, if an attacker can guess the value of your section ID, then they can access the site as that user. And this we are calling impersonation. So attacker first access the application to determine the session ID and, or, and where it is stored. Attacker then pre predicts the next session ID. So for instance, if attacker knows that the session ID is nine, definitely the next session will be 10, and the following session will be 11. So the attacker can predict the next session ID. So attacker switch, the attackers switch the current ID value and is logged in as the identity of the next user. Now, this can be done by brute force as well. So there's an, there's an application called brute force which tries to get or guess or predict the session ID or password. And this is called credential or section prediction. Now, for weak authentication, we have a typical example as the user login. So if you have your user login, username and password, if the authentication me mechanism in a web application is weak, now it is in danger of being exploited by an attacker. Now, for weak authentication, that allows weak password in a login field. So we have providing single words like 
names or pet names. We have number combinations like birthdays. These are weak authentications. It allows a username and password field to accept multiple input login attempts. So for some web applications, one can enter passwords as many as 10 or 10 times, which is a very bad practice. So it's important you limit the number of times a user provides a wrong password. For weak authentication also, it leads to an attacker being able to run automated try and error programs to guess the, 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 the password. And this we are call, also calling the brute force attack. So here, we try to second guess the password of the user. Now, exploiting weak authentication using password recovery. So for some web application, often they contain an automated process for users to recover their forgotten password. So a typical example, you will be asked to provide a secret or you have a secret question and you are supposed to provide an answer to. And once that is done, you provide some personal information, sometimes your mobile phone number, sometimes your usernames, sometimes your passwords. Now, once a user provides who he or she is, an automated email is then sent to her or him with a new password. Now, if the method of the method you use for a user to identify themselves is weak, then right there the attacker can guess the user's identity. So examples of weak password recovery mechanisms are using user verification information that can be easily obtained and guessed. So you are supposed to avoid such such things. Email address, home address, phone number, they can be obtained from online white pages. Now using password hints is also another way which gives us weak authentication. Now, some people will provide as a hint birthday with some favorite vacation spots. Now, once the attacker knows that, the attacker uses that against the user. Now, secret questions and answers that allows for an easier brute force attack must be avoided. Example, where were you born? Now, authentication controls, what to test for. Now, these are some examples of things to look out for. Username should be at least seven characters. Username and password must match. If there's no mismatch, then it should fail. You should also enforce password history. Now, maximum password age are some of the examples of ways of controlling authentication. For section management, we can look at, is the session timeout present? Check all those things. Always create new session, generate new IDs. Now, does the session invalidate or request tempering? All these has to be looked at in order to provide a better session management. Now, how do we fix a weak authentication? First and foremost, we are saying use strong passwords. So restrict passwords to a minimum size and com complexities. You can require a combination of alphabets, numeric and non-numeric characters. And also, always enforce password use. So restrict to a defined number of login attempts. So a maximum of three. Once the attempt is, is exceeded, if you block whichever user is using whichever username and password. Now keep a log of any failed attempt, but do not log the actual password. So here we are talking about encryption, even in your login. Provide a generic error message for a failed login attempt. So don't provide detailed error messages like your username and password. Now fixing weak authentication. Now password storage and protection is one way to do that. So these should be stored as a hash file or encrypted values, not play in plain text. Now, the entire login transaction should be sent through a secured system. So we are looking at SSL. So password change controls. So as often as possible, passwords should be changed. So a single mechanism should be 
provided for users to change their password. And for some user or web application nowadays, you are being forced to change passwords either monthly or even quarterly. Now, forgetting passwords can be emailed, but users must be re-authenticated to change their email addresses if they need be. Now, how do we prevent section or session hijacking? We are talking about secure coding techniques and modern develop, developer frameworks, which can be used to beef up application authentication. Okay, we are looking at ensuring user re-authentication before allowing any change. So change passwords and personal details are a common first action by hijackers. So it's important to change passwords as often as possible. Now, forcing re-authentication terminates a hijacked session. So once you enforce re-authentication, now sessions that were created or that were hijacked are automatically dropped. So a simple coding technique can help to reduce this risk. Always terminate sessions after a time period of user activity. Okay. For example, a user, once a user hits a time limit of say five minutes of a website inactivity, the application should automatically terminate the session. Okay, most applications nowadays do that. And this is an, another simple measure that reduce the risk of session hijacking. And it's a technique you will experience with most online banking web apps. Also, how do we fix weak session management? We're talking about permanent cookies should not be used to store session values. Because remember, hackers can go into your local files and extract such cookies. Now, permanent cookies should be long, complicated. We have random numbers that cannot be guessed. So, for instance, your password should be long enough should also be complicated enough. We are talking about characters, we are talking about numbers. And it should be set to expire after a certain period of time. So like I said, some organizations are now doing password changes every two weeks, every one month. Now, so in summary, we have looked at web applications vulnerability around broken authentication and session management. We've seen how attackers can exploit these vulnerabilities, and we've seen some actual examples with that. Now, we can look at more examples also at the website provided, www.webappsec.org. Here you can find such examples of broken authentication and section management. And we've also looked at how to fix broken authentication and section management, including section hijacking. This brings us to the end of section 4. I'll see you later in section 5.